morning to you. Today is Wednesday, January the 5th, 2022. I'm going to try to say that every day so that I get used to it, uh, that it is 2022. Good start to the year already, this first week. Um, glad to be awake this morning, glad to be up, had a good night's rest. I hope you did too. Um, this morning we're going to pick up in John chapter 13 after we uh, just do an opening song. Just want to remind everybody that tonight is our corporate prayer, first and foremost at 6 p.m. Uh, we will be meeting in the Children's Center, so make plans to be here tonight for our corporate prayer. Let's start the new year off right, uh, coming together as a body uh, to pray for the Lord's direction, to pray for healing for others, um, and just God's hand. Vanessa, praying that you're doing well today after your chemo treatment yesterday. And Barbara, we're praying for you. We know that your cancer has returned and you've got surgery, I believe, on the 19th. And so we're praying for you. Let's continue to pray for Hugh and Beverly Bill as Beverly's continuing to recover at home and for Hugh uh, taking care of her. Um, Gail, I'm glad that you are on the rebound from your COVID bout. The Lord is good. And this is an old hymn that... Um, may have been done in, I think it was done mainly in uh, Presbyterian tradition, not so much in Baptist tradition, but some did. But it's an old hymn called, uh, This Is My Father's World. This is my Father's world, and to my listening ear, all nature sings and crowns. is my father's world. I rest me in the thought of rocks and trees, of skies and seas, and the wonders wrong. This is my father's world. The birds they been on my heart a lot because as the weather has changed and I've taken some time just to to look at nature if you will during the winter months and um, I recognize and see the beauty in that we love the spring and we love the fall the times in the spring when the new leaves begin to bud and the green is greener than uh, boy it's just green and then the flowers begin to bud and the summer and then the fall and the leaves begin to change. We see all of that beauty, but I was struck just this uh, last couple of days at looking at the beauty of the barren winter. And I thought, Lord, only you can, can bring beauty from 
uh, from a time like that. And so that's where that song came to my mind. Uh, this is my father's world, and we know that he holds all things together and all things are held together in him. And if he's concerned about the sparrow, the Bible tells us that he, he is concerned about us. If he can clothe the lily of the field, then certainly he is capable of clothing us, and we trust him in all of those areas of provision. Well, here we're coming to John chapter 13, and it's uh, that that Passover meal that Jesus is, has had prepared for he and his disciples as they're preparing to go into Passover celebration. And, of course, we see the significance of, of Jesus going to the cross during the Passover feast and celebration uh, as the Lamb of God who would take away the sins of the world. And so John begins to record these events uh, from here on out through the rest of the Gospel of John. It's going to be that last weekend, really, and uh, of Jesus' life. And it says in verse 1, Now before the feast of the Passover, of course, there was a feast that was involved where um, there was uh, you would eat no leaven, uh, bitter herbs, and all of those things in preparation for Passover. And also in preparation for Passover, it was a time of cleansing of one's house. And so all the leaven would be removed from the house, and yeast, you might say, would be removed from the house because it was a, a symbol of sin and, and, and uncleanliness. And this is kind of where the idea of spring cleaning came about. Uh, and so the Jews would clean their house, and not only would they clean their house, but they would also make certain bathing preparations to cleanse himself and a lot of that we read into this passage so before the feast of passover when jesus knew that his hour had come to depart out of this world to the father having loved his uh, own who were in the world he loved them to the end now here i i really love this it just struck me this morning when uh, i thought about jesus with with those that are his own particularly john speaking of the apostles here or his disciples, um, but I love this. Jesus knew that his hour had come and he was about to depart from him and that he loved them to the very end. And I reflected on that and, and thought about that, that the, the fact is, is that Jesus the, and the Father, the Holy Spirit, love us to the very end. I think of that doctrine of the perseverance of the saints, that we are saved to the uttermost to the very end. And that in Romans chapter 8, where Paul speaks of that there's nothing that could ever pluck us out of his hand or nothing could ever separate from the love of God, which is in Christ Jesus. And he will love us to the very end. We're covered by his blood, sealed uh, by his grace, saved in him, and he loves us to the very end. Reflect on that today. Verse 2, he says, During supper... When the devil had already put it into the heart of Judas Iscariot, Simon's son, to betray him, Jesus, knowing that the Father had given all things into his hands and that he had come from God and he was going back to God, he rose from supper. Um, of course, Judas, had, had one of the apostles, had been tempted, and we see here that it was the enemy. It was the devil that put the thought in Judas Iscariot's mind to portray Jesus, uh, to betray Jesus, and Jesus knew that. And so Jesus gets up from the table. Verse 4, he rose from supper, and he laid aside his outer garments, and taking a towel, tied it around his waist. And he poured water into basin and began to wash the disciples' feet to wipe away with him that towel that he had wrapped around him. Now here we see Jesus doing something that was reserved for the servant of the house or um, the slave of the house. And it, it's kind of interesting we pick up that none of the other apostles had, had taken up a towel to wrap it around themselves to begin to wash the other's feet. But here Jesus was, the master, the teacher, rises from the table and he takes off his outer garment. He would have still had an undergarment on. And he wraps the towel around his waist and he gets a basin of water and he begins to wash his disciples' feet. Now, there's so many things that we could say about that. We're going to look at that a little bit more tomorrow as we pick up in verse 12 and talk about that. But I, I find it interesting that none of the other apostles took down on themselves to do. It was Jesus who um, decided that he would set an example to these apostles and wash their feet. Then he comes to Simon Peter, 
And Simon says to him, Lord, do not wash my feet. Now, I don't know whether it was out of a sense of humility or arrogance that Peter would have said this to Jesus. I, I kind of have an idea that it was a little bit of both. Number one, maybe there was a little guilt or shame that Peter was facing when he realized that, wow, I, I didn't do this and here the master is getting up to wash our feet. Perhaps it was a little bit of humility uh, on his part, thinking, uh, Jesus, you're greater than I am. Why is it that you're washing my feet? This is something that's reserved only for the slave to do in the house. But I also think there's a sense of pride here in Peter, because we're going to see uh, in a little bit why I say that. You see, I see in Peter here this idea that um, that that he didn't need to be cleansed. In other words, who are you to wash my feet? He says, Lord, do not wash my feet. And Jesus said, what I'm doing, you do not understand now, but afterwards you will understand. And then Peter answered him, you shall never wash my feet. Now, here again, is Peter saying, you're not going to wash my feet. The reason I think that it's a little bit of pride is because I see that in us sometimes, and we actually see it all the way back to the garden where Adam and Eve had sinned against God. You see, we have that idea that 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 we can clean up ourselves. I don't know if you fall into that trap every now and then, but rather than running to Jesus and pleading his mercy and his grace and his blood, we try to cover up or we try to take care of our sin on our own. And we have to recognize and realize that, that our sin, number one, if we've trusted Christ, has already been taken care of in Him. And that restoration back into fellowship with Jesus once when we've sinned against Him cannot be accomplished on our merit or on our abilities or our work. You see, that restoration back to Him and fellowship after we've sinned against God um, can only come through the cleansing blood and power of Jesus by the work of the Holy Spirit. So today, if you're trying to clean yourself up, trying to get back into fellowship with Jesus, let me encourage you, there is nothing you can do to cleanse yourself enough to get back into fellowship with Jesus. What the Bible calls us to do is simply acknowledge, repent of our sin, and come boldly before the throne of God. We receive grace and mercy in our time of need. And so here Peter says, Lord, you're never going to wash my feet. And I would say to all of us, don't ever say, Jesus, you can't wash my feet. Listen, he's the only one that can cleanse us from our sins. And then he says, Jesus says to Peter, if I do not wash you, then you have no share with me. And Peter replied, Lord, not my feet only, but also my hands and my head. In other words, just wash all of me, cleanse all of me. And Jesus says to him, the one who is bathed does not need to wash except for his feet, but it is completely clean. And you are clean, but not every one of you, for he knew the one that would betray him. And he said, not all of you are clean. This morning in closing, I just want you to take some time and let's thank the Lord Jesus for cleansing us from all of our sins, that, that all of our cleansing is in his responsibility. I pray the Lord would bless you and keep you today. I, I pray that uh, God would give us an opportunity that as we have opportunity through the day to, to plant a seed of the gospel in somebody's heart, to cultivate a seed that's already been planted there. And if God by his grace would allow us to participate and watch him save somebody, Boy, that would be great. I want to remind you and encourage you to be a part of corporate prayer tonight. First and foremost, 6 p.m. tonight as we come together to pray as a body in the children's area. This weekend, we have Ben Clark and his sisters, the Purple Halls, uh, with us. Great time to encourage the body through song and, and just a, a good time of fellowship. Encourage you to invite somebody to come with you this weekend. Uh, tell them you'll meet them in the lobby and sit with them um, We'll have a good time. The word will be shared. And then Sunday evening, men, at 5.30, we have our um, our men's barbecue and fellowship. 5.30 p.m., Dennis Parker is going to be with us sharing and testimony and song. Amen. Make plans to be here. 
Uh, it is free. There's no charge. We will be receiving a love offering uh, for Dennis, but I encourage you to be a part of that this Sunday afternoon at 5.30 p.m. Lord bless you. Have a great day.